Hey, I'm Brian with Fishers Off-Road and in today's video, we're gonna be installing a Rick's Double Shot Razor Charging Kit in our Razor XP1000 non-turbo. And the reason you might wanna think about upgrading your stator kit is because it may not be putting out enough power. You might be having electrical issues and you can't figure out what's going on with it. Well, probably one of the reasons is you're overtaxing your charging system. And by running the Rick's Double Shot Kit, you're gonna upgrade that system and take it from the stock 600 watts to a little over 1,000 watts so you can run a lot more accessories. So let's talk about why you would wanna look at beefing up your charging system. Let's take a look here and show you exactly what happens with your vehicle and what kind of numbers you're working with and why it's important to have more power than what you need. So your stock stator puts out 600 watts of power, okay? So you have 600 watts, and that is at 3,500 RPMs. That is not at 1,000 RPMs. That is 3,500 RPMs, and that's your full 600 watts. Now, let's say your vehicle uses about 400 watts. It might be a little more than that. Uh, so maybe four, 450, uh, that's what your vehicle uses to run everything on it. The lights, the ECU, the fuel injection, if, if you have the ride command, a stereo, everything that's on that vehicle, that vehicle has to actually create power to run that. And whenever people get their vehicles, they get all excited and they want to put on a light, a winch, a stereo, all kind of cool stuff, particle separators. Now what happens is, uh, let's say you have 200 watts left okay 200 watts at 3500 rpms okay so if you put a heater uh lights a stereo a particle separator um maybe a seat heater whatever other electrical stuff you want to put on there i've seen some crazy stuff out on the trail on people's vehicles you have 200 watts left so now you got to start doing the math and saying okay well this is going to use this much this is going to use this much and then go down the line and figure out how much is being used what you don't want to do is run that right to 600 because what you're going to do is you're going to overtax the system you're going to create heat when you create heat you melt connectors and you do internal damage to all your electrical components you you don't want to do that so it's not like you have anything left over or extra and it's not like your truck or car it doesn't have an alternator that can create more power what you have is what you have and you can't get any more than that sometimes people will run a dual battery setup all that's going to do is prolong the damage and prolong the fact that you're going to run out of power and you're creating a lot of heat. The Rick's Double Shot Kit comes with two really heavy duty regulators and I mean these things are beefy. You get nine foot of cable that you can install this wherever you want on your vehicle and the reason you have nine feet of cable is because you want to put your regulator somewhere where it's going to get air and it's going to stay clean. You know years ago Polaris put the regulator in front of the back driver's side tire well it would get all muddy then it would get hot the mud would bake on there then it would overheat and it would fail so that's why you want to make sure you keep this in a clean area where it's going to get air but if you look at this you'll see that the ricks stuff is super heavy duty the connectors the wires themselves this thing is definitely next level another cool thing about the ricks regulators is you'll notice that they have one inlet here that still have the wires going in but it's a solid connection if you look at the stock rec reg this thing has two inlets where you plug it in at now this creates a lot more heat and it's not as reliable as something like this they've eliminated the heat points and increased the reliability with this rec reg so then you look at the stator and this is a two circuit stator so it's two different sides of this stator so it's cut down in half so uh, that way if one half fails the other half will still get you back to camp or even to the dealer or you know back home wherever you're going so that way you're not stuck sitting in the woods it creates a lot more power and a lot more reliability by by doing the two different circuits and then we have the rick's hot shot flywheel uh, this is like a high performance flywheel for them so you'll get this in the kit and uh, you also get some zip ties to button it up. Something else you're gonna wanna get is a service manual. 
because uh, this does not come with your vehicle. You, the one that comes with your vehicle just doesn't have enough information to get the job done. If you're a DIYer and you want to start turning wrenches, this is what you're going to need. And when you order the Rick's Double Shock kit, just go ahead and put the side cover gasket on there and also the puller. You're going to need this to get the flywheel off. Uh, you will not be able to do it with the little three claw puller. That's not going to work. You got to use a specific puller for that so you can get that at Rick's. So now that we got all this stuff laid out, let's go ahead and get it started. We went ahead and prepped our razor a little bit for the install. As you can see, one of the first things we did was we jacked it up on the passenger side. You want to get it nice and elevated so that way the oil goes to the driver's side. So whenever you take your cover off, uh, you don't lose any oil or hardly any at all. Now that we got the rear tire and the shock removed, we got the sway bar out of the way. We're going to go ahead and remove the stator cover. There's 13 8 millimeter bolts that hold this on. So we're going to take those out. We're going to also remove the crank position sensor up here. Now when you're taking this cover, off it's going to be on there pretty solid so you're going to have to kind of work it there are a couple ears on your cover that you can use to pry that's what they're there for you don't want to be prying inside and messing everything up in there because if you scarred or bust something or chip something off you're going to definitely have a leak all right so we've got all of our bolts loosened up for our cover here so we're going to go ahead and uh, loosen up the top eight millimeter bolt on that crank position sensor now. So there's one bolt holding the crank position sensor in there. You're just going to spin it a little bit and pop it right out, right like that. I'm going to take this and we're going to bring it back here. We're going to tuck it up in here out of the way. So we're going to go ahead and start working on getting this thing off of here. We're going to have to use these ears and pry on it a little bit and just Now taking that off, you're going to have to put some muscle into it because that magnet is holding this on and uh, you're going to have to put some arm into it to get it off of there. There's a connector back here uh, for your stator. So what you'll do is, and you can't really see it because it's behind everything. So you just lift the tab and you pop it and you pull this right out. So all we did was we lift that tab up and pulled up from uh, the connector that's down there. That's all there is to it right there. There's your stator. Now we're going to take off the flywheel and you start with this bolt right here. You generally can take it off with an impact. It's a 22 millimeter. And then we're going to show you how the puller works. All right, we're going to put our puller on here and this is a left hand thread. These are really fine threads. So sometimes they're hard to catch. We're going to get this on here and Get it started. So now what we'll do is we'll put this in here. I've seen different ideas and feedback on Loctite and what to use on your stator and your flywheel. Some people say red's good, some people say blue's good as long as you torque it down. So whatever your personal preference is, you got to do uh, what's right for you. So red or blue, if you use red, uh, it's going to be difficult getting it back off again if you have to in the future. Uh, blue, you know, you just got to lock it down, make sure you torque it down good so it doesn't come loose. So totally up to you. When we were talking earlier about having a manual, a service manual, all that information's in here. It's going to show you how to remove uh, the flywheel. It's going to show you how to reinstall the flywheel. It's going to give you torque specs. So all your information is right in here for removal and installation of everything. So if you have any questions, your service manual is going to have all your answers for you. So this is your stock stator right here. We're going to replace that with the Rick's double shot. And you can even see it's, it's a lot more heavy duty. We got our cover all cleaned up. Now we're going to get our Rick's double shot stator in here.
And while we're here, we're going to go ahead and just torque that down to specs. You'll have to see what your machine takes as far as how many foot pounds. Make sure you get your grommet. You see there's a, a center line on this grommet. You want to make sure you get that center in the, the center here. Right like that. It's going to fit in there. It's like a, a puzzle piece. You make sure you get it in there the right way. That way it'll seal it up real good and nothing will get in there. We got our gasket all cleaned off of the case here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our flywheel on. So you want to line that up with your keyway. And you want to kind of get it, get it started there a little bit. And then what you can do is you can take your bolt and you're going to have it lined up. You don't want to just take an impact and start running it on there. At least I don't. I mean, I don't, I don't know how you want to do it, but I just like to kind of take my time and put it on there just a little bit at a time. That way it draws it in nice and even. You want to make sure you torque this bolt to specs. This is 133 pounds. Now it's time to put the gasket on. And if you want, you can use some RTV gasket or we've got uh, Honda Bond on there. It's, um, it's like a liquid gasket. You can put that on there or you don't have to. Some people swear by it, some people don't like it. So that's personal preference. We're gonna get our starter gear up in here. So we got our stator cover here. One thing you wanna make sure you do not do is put your fingers in here like that to hold it when you're putting it on, because that magnet will suck it right in. And if your finger's in there, that's gonna hurt. There we go. And then if you ever have to tap on this to get it on there, you wanna make sure you use a rubber mallet. Don't use a, a hammer. Now what we gotta do is put our 13 bolts back. Now there is an order to putting these back in. So this is what I'm talking about when there's an order to torquing your uh, bolts. So it's nine foot pounds, but here's the order you go in. You just follow the diagram and that's the order you torque them in. That's one of the benefits to having a shop manual as opposed to not having a manual and not knowing exactly how things go back together. When you're putting these in, you can put them in any order you want. It's just whenever it comes to torquing them down. I mean, you can run them in there and they don't have to touch. You don't want to forget about your crank position sensor and your clip that holds it in place right up top here, holds the wire. Be careful when you're tightening that bolt up on that crank position sensor, you don't want to break that ear off. That's just like plastic, like composite. Won't take much. All right, so we got our 13 bolts kind of snugged up, but not torqued. So now we'll get the torque wrench and we'll uh, torque them to specs. So now you see you have two wires coming out of your stator instead of one because you have two regulators. I've already mounted one regulator up on the driver's side and I'll show you the bracket and how I'm gonna mount it on the passenger side. So let's check that out. So what we did here is we made brackets for the cage so that way the regulator could bolt right onto the bracket and the cage because the bolt holes weren't lining up so that the regulator could bolt right on there. Whenever it comes to installing, I really enjoy making my own brackets and fabricating stuff so that it looks factory, it doesn't look like an afterthought. I think this is a really clean fit and finish look. The uh, regulator just, I mean, it looks factory on there. And then you're gonna run your wires right down the cage here. You use the zip ties that Rick sent along with the kit. So I'm really pleased with the way it looks and I know it's going to perform the best right here. It's going to get a lot of air and it's going to stay clean and that's what you want. So we get the bracket mounted on there first and then we'll take our regulator and we'll go ahead and mount that up. You have your bolt holes in your regulator. 
And what I did was the, the bolt holes weren't lining up with the cage bolt holes. So that's why I made the bracket where it's gonna space it out a little bit. So what we'll do is we'll take and we'll put our regulator up on here and it's gonna bolt right on there like that. Whenever I do my zip ties, I like to get everything in place before I snug anything up. And you don't really want to crank too hard on the zip tie. I mean, it's just really there to kind of keep it in place. You don't want to hawk on it. Just going to run those right down through there. All right, guys, we're about done. All we need to do is run our wires yet. We're going to go ahead and zip tie them up. And you want to make sure when you're running your wires, you don't run them over anything hot or sharp because that'll ruin a good day's ride once you burn through these or cut them. Uh, Rick's has a really nice heavy duty sleeve on here, but you still want to use caution when you're running your wires. And then we're going to use some dielectric grease when we put our connectors together. Uh, anytime we're working with electric, we like to use dielectric grease. You don't want to put on too much when you're putting dielectric grease on, just basically enough to glaze it. That's it, that's all you need. If you have it squishing out the sides, you have too much in there. Put them together, and that's gonna click. There you go, that's together. Another wire you're gonna hook up coming off the regulator is a positive and a negative wire going to your battery. This is on both regulators, so you'll hook these up directly to the battery. Well, there you go, guys. That's a wrap on our Rick's Double Shot Charging Kit install on our Razor. We're not gonna waste your time showing you how to zip tie wires because I'm pretty sure you all know how to do that. The bottom line is that we have an incredible charging system that took our vehicle from 600 watts to up over 1,000 watts that we could have the flexibility to hook up a lot of different accessories on our vehicle and not tax our charging system. If you want more information on this, you can check it out at ricksmotorsportelectrics.com. This kit also fits several other vehicles you can also get that information there. MSRP is $699.95. Feel free to hit them up. They'd be happy to help you out. I'll see you guys. Take care. Have a good one.